All right guys, today I'm gonna to talk about closing tough deals. Probably one of the most important things I could probably talk about and one of the most things that gets overlooked because we talk about sales and selling a client and getting a client to buy in and all of those things. But you're only as good as the deals you actually close. And what are some different tactics in closing a tough deal? So to put this in kind of context, I'm just gonna make up a scenario and I'm gonna walk you through it and how things can kind of go off the rails and how I would get it back on the rails during the process. So we'll make up this customer, his name is John Doe and John Doe is buying his first house and John Doe doesn't have a lot of money to put down. And we'll walk through that process right now and all the things that could come up and how you can solve those problems. So the first thing that happens is John Doe gets referred to you or comes to you and wants to buy a house. Now, John Doe has a credit score that we'll just say barely qualifies. I won't go into detail. We'll say he barely qualifies for this house. He barely qualifies for a down payment, barely qualifies for his monthly payment, barely qualifies with his credit score. He's a fringe worthy client and the realtor refers his client to you. Now, the first thing you want to do is talk to the realtor about how marginal the client is because the realtor doesn't know that that client is one misstep away from not qualifying. And so, hey, I'm gonna get this client approved, but I just wanna let you know that they're fringe worthy. So if anything happens during the process, I'm gonna sort it out, but I wanna have a conversation now to let you know that they're fringe worthy. Meaning if they open up more debt, if they miss a payment on something, if they, let's say, take time off of work, all of these things could affect their ability to qualify especially if they get more debt. So I just want to have this conversation so that during the process, you and I keep our eyes on the prize. That this client is qualified, but barely. Like the down payment is barely enough. So have that conversation up front with the realtor. Secondly, have this conversation with the client and you have to give them a list of do not do's. Do not do's. Under any circumstances, can you Mr. or Mrs. Client Open up any new debt. You can't lose your job. You can't take time off of work where your hours dip. You can't go out and finance anything else. You have to keep your reserves in place. You can't go on vacation and spend the down payment money you have on a trip because it's going to be tempting for you to go buy stuff for the house. You can't. You have to keep your money in place until the end, until the very, very end. Because it can be so simple as, the money in the bank changed the end because the client gave you an updated statement and they have 1,000 less in their account. They may think, it's only 1,000 bucks less, what is the big deal to you? Well, it could be everything because I need not just your down payment, but I have to have extra reserves to qualify you. So the first thing you wanna do is walk the client through a list of do's and do not do's, and you wanna walk the realtor through the fringe worthiness of the client and let them know that this client can't make any false steps. So there are no surprises. Then you get into your process. And the next thing you want to do is set proper expectations on timing, timing, and let the client know that the one thing that can make us miss our mark is when I ask you for something, you don't get it back to me on time and in a hurry. And by that, I mean within 24 hours. If I get that in 48 or in 72, we could miss our closing date. So the client now going to pay attention to whenever you need stuff because they want to buy this house. Now this loan gets into qualifying. And let's say by the time you pre-approve them to the time that they actually got into contract, let's say now good old rates changed and the rates went up by half a point or a quarter point. And guess what? Now this fringe worthy client is not qualified. So what do you do? What are your options? What's the hack? You only have two options. You can either lower their payments or raise their income. So the first thing I like to do is see, how can I get more income for this client? Do they have a second job I didn't know about? Do they have other assets that can be used as income? Maybe their wife or husband isn't on loan, I can add them. If you've run out of options on adding income and the price has gone up monthly, the only other option you have is to lower their debts by making them pay off some debts through closing. Let's say they don't have that money to pay off debts through closing. What can you do? Well, you can give them a credit, $500 credit towards their costs, $1,000 credit towards their costs, 
or the agent can give a small credit towards their costs, or the seller can give a small credit towards their costs. And that $1,000 that they were going to use to pay for costs, they now use that $1,000 to pay off their debt. And that's just what could happen during a transaction. Now, let's say you go through the whole process and let's say you've missed some timelines because now all the changes have pushed your dates back. What you want to do to hold this deal together is communicate. But because you talked to the agent in the very beginning, and by agent, I mean agents, buyers and sellers, and if this hiccup or two, which is going to happen, you had to restructure the loan, different loan program, bigger down payment, you had to add a cosigner, you had to you know, switch, they switch jobs, these things are gonna happen. But because you have these fringe-worthy conversations up front with both of the realtors, they're not gonna be surprised when you ask for more time. But what you've done is you earn their trust because you've been a master communicator and when things change, you can say, see, I told you this was gonna happen, but I'm prepared for it and I'm still gonna close. Maybe it's gonna be a week late, but we're still gonna close. As long as that seller knows they're still gonna get their money, if it's a week later, they're gonna be okay. It's better than losing a deal altogether. And as long as they know you can still get it done, you'll get it done. So during this process, expect for things to go wrong, be a master communicator, and always understand that you have to communicate to clients what they can and can't do, and be prepared for their debt to increase, or their cash to be lower, or their hours to change. And you either have to give them more income or less debt or lower the rate to offset that price. But by communicating throughout the process, you've earned future referrals from both of the agents and the client you're closing their deal for. That's a hack in purchasing a home and helping clients walk through a process and how to keep a deal together even when things can get out of hand.